Let us explain Nightmare Sigils as well as Nightmare Dungeons, how it works, how to craft them, how to get them originally, everything you basically need to know about it. So the first thing you need to know is a Nightmare Sigil. What exactly is it? It is an item that is a consumable, meaning when you use it, it is gone. You do not get it back. This item will activate a dungeon depending upon which dungeon Nightmare Sigil it is. It says it in the title, Abandoned My Works, for instance, will, will make that actual dungeon become a Nightmare Dungeon. It also will read you off the affixes that goes with the sigil. The affixes are effectively modifiers, sort of like greater rifts that would happen back in Diablo 3. You can see them and read them quite cl clearly exactly what they do. Some of these are stronger than others. We're not going to go into an actual tier list of which the actual best sigil is. This is more of an overarching view, so you are welcome to learn that in a later video. You can subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when we do that breakdown. So the next thing you need to know is how exactly do you figure out which dungeon it is where it goes. So once you've actually activated it, it will show you directly when you hit tab on the map where it is. You can drop a pin and it will lead you directly to it. You can go to a waypoint, etc. You get more sigils once you actually are completing the dungeon that it is. So if you're doing a 22 and you complete it, very often it's gonna drop a 23 for you. So you do a 23, you can get a 24, etc., and you can climb it that way. Almost sort of like gray the rift season again with the keystones and the way it works. You gotta get you know keys in order to unlock it, etc. So that is how the sigils work. Now, if you want to be able to craft them and make your own, you can make the ones tier one through five, which are the lowest ones, all the way to tier 100. And the level of the characters go up, like the enemies you're gonna be fighting get stronger the higher it goes. It is very difficult at the higher tiers. No one that I know it was able to clear 100 during any of these full early accesses. They were like level, uh, you know, 155 or something like that last time we tried doing a, a Sigil 100. Um, and you're going to continue to get better and better experience. Now, what experience are we talking about? We're talking, of course, about the experience that you're going to get uh, from your Paragon boards. You see you have glyphs and you need to level your glyphs in order to increase with the stats that the glyphs actually contribute. These glyphs go into the empty node sockets available on your Paragon on board. This is very often where you're going to get a large amount of damage. Look at that. I have 68% overpower damage as well as increase the damage they take from me by 12% when they're overpowered. And I am running, in fact, an overpowered build. So I'm getting large amounts of damage from this. This is very much like legendary gym leveling from Diablo 3, where you would run the rifts and you would use the experience at the end of the sigil in order to actually level up your glyphs. That is what this is. Same thing as legendary gems basically from D3, but now they are in the Paragon board. Now, in order to actually be able to craft these, you have to run a certain amount of the sigils. Now, like I said, when you do one sigil, you'll very often get another, so it's perpetual in that sake. But how do you get the first ones? Well, you do the first ones by going to the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is unlocked once you basically completed your primary quest. You will then be able to do the Tree of Whispers in order to uh, get 10 favors to get a Tree of Whispers a little cash and inside the cash you can get nightmare sigils to start in order the complete tree of favors all you need to do is effectively open up your map and you're going to notice there are events you see how i have three grim favors on the bottom of the red bar the dungeons will give you five these medium red ones will give you three and the lighter pink ones will give you one favor once you have 10 favor you go talk to the tree and you can get your first sigil there you will eventually unlock the ability to craft the sigils if you do enough nightmare dungeon i think it's five it could be 10 i forget off the top of my head i didn't write that down during the early access but after a certain amount of nightmare dungeons it just unlocks a side quest that will show up basically on the map right up here and once you have that side quest unlocked you just go do it and th the only thing the quest is is just a, it's a tutorial explanation the same way the occultist has a side quest when you go to use them for the first time so when in doubt finish the primary story do the tree of whispers get a sigil do enough sigils until that unlocks for you and then you can actually go start crafting them now, you can actually salvage sigil, so if you find one you no longer need, you will get some sigil powder for that. And then, of course, you can also craft sigils as well using sigil powder. So you can see very obviously the synergy and how this actually breaks down, and the higher tier ones cost more sigil powder. Sigils are actually very important because the rare nodes will expand their radius once you get them to a certain level, which is 15, for instance, it will expand its radius. Expanding the radius can be important because there is, on some of the boards, there is requirements. So if you look at this, like I need 25 intelligence within range. Well, if there wasn't enough intelligence on this board, expanding this radiance might actually give me the ability to get enough intelligence to be able to activate the secondary bonus. So depending upon how your build is and how you're min-maxing on the Paragon boards, you might actually need to expand the radius, uh, which means you want to run a lot of Nightmare Sigils. It's actually quite good experience as well. 
Now, something to keep in mind about the Nightmare Sigils is uh, when you're doing Nightmare Dungeons, the Nightmare Dungeons, depending upon the tier, have a revive limit. So it'll be like 14 or only four or something like that amount of revives you can have. Well, if you're solo, you can't be res. So every revive that you have to use counts against you. Whereas if you have a dual partner or more, when you get revived, it doesn't count against your revive. So for that reason, doing the Nightmare Dungeons is actually better in a group. It's safer. Basically, all you need to know for Sigils anymore would just be lengthening the video for no reason. So like the video, subscribe, please see you on the next one.